Today I'm at Gullergård, which is this wonderful place in Denmark um, where ceramic artists can go and work, kind of a refugee, and um, they uh, have uh, a collection of wood-fired kilns. Uh, it's the biggest collection, I think, in, in Northern Europe. They also have a lot of electric kilns and gas kilns, and they have this wonderful workplace. Um, so I've been down here before and I actually have a video on my channel uh, from the first trip uh, down here and uh, you can hope, you can watch that. Um, but this time I went down here with uh, Christian Bro, um, who's one of Denmark's finest potters uh, or ceramic artists. He's well known for his very large pots and also very fine porcelain. But for this trip he produced a number of um, highly textured uh, porcelain uh, vases um, and we are gonna, we're going to fire that uh, over the next few days. Tonight we are glazing and tomorrow we're going to pack the kilns and then uh, Wednesday morning, it's Monday evening now, we're going to start the firing, which is probably going to take somewhere around 24 to 36 hours. There's a car coming now, so I need to end this, but I will shoot um, some clips from the next days and edit it together. and. Um, Hopefully you will enjoy it, but please remember to subscribe and to like and share and make a comment if you have anything to add. So, welcome. So now it's the right time to do the interview. <laughs> oh yes. So how long have you been glazing now? I've been glazing since 12 o'clock this morning. It's 12 o'clock evening and uh, we're like almost halfway. <laughs> so it's and it all has to be done by tomorrow morning. Yeah, we're, well, we have don't have to be ready before nine o'clock, so we still have plenty of time. That's good. <laughs> well, and who needs to sleep anyway? It's always tiring, but it's uh, also like a nice job to accomplish what you uh, started. So, and what you see here is uh, like all the different uh, 
thing that goes into the, the wood fire kiln and the, they're all like texture surface and they're all with the different uh, glazes and they like each part is uh, glazed to fit into a specific place in the kiln and uh, but what comes out is uh, like always with ceramic and especially wood fire ceramic uh, you never know until you open the kiln uh, because yeah. You never know. <laughs> so what, what, uh, what kind of glazes are you using for this uh, particular fire? Uh, this is uh, old porcelain clay. And uh, porcelain is very nice in a wood fire because it uh, comes out like really uh, clear and sharp and precise. And uh, get a little icy, you can say, or it's... Um, but what about you would you would read it certain places you would read that uh, because of the, the uh, dramatic uh, heat pressure in the in the wood fired uh, kilns that you would have to use uh, crocked clay which of course the porcelain is not but, but I mean that's I know it's not true. <laughs> no, well, it, but it is true that the porcelain warps uh, and it uh, changes shape. But the, the the shapes that I'm working with is uh, like very strong and sturdy shapes. Uh, we're not doing uh, big open bowls. We're not doing uh, very thin uh, thrown cups and stuff, which um, easily collapse in the in the firing. But uh, these are, uh, are just very strong uh, pieces, and they are not made to be thin. We make very thin cups and um, functional wear, but these are more decorative pieces, and they don't have to be thin, so they are not. What are the glazes that you're using for um, this? We have very, very traditional glazes. Uh, there's a uh, uh, Japanese-based, uh, really uh, a glaze uh, variety of of something called a chino glaze, which comes out white or black or yellow, orange, uh, whitish. Uh, there's a celadon glaze, which is uh, comes out green, brown, uh, bluish, and uh, there's a uh, um, uh, and Oribe, it's called, it's a, it's a green glaze, which comes out uh, red or uh, bluish. Uh, and uh, so that's the glazes. They all, they're all characterized by having like a, a nice range of colors. So you never know if it comes out black or white or blue or green or red, but they, they have like a characteristic way of developing colors just like the leaves of a tree you can say it's green yes in the springtime but in the fall it's it's yellow or it's it's, it's brown or it's red uh, but it's the same leaf uh, these places develop their colors almost in the same way as the leaves develop their colors uh, so a pigment can change and you give lots of different colors it will be exciting tomorrow, and um, so we, we are stacking the kilns tomorrow, and then uh, Wednesday morning we will initiate start, the fire. We will start firing, yeah. and then it takes uh, at least around maybe 30 hours to fire the kiln, and uh, another three or four days before we can open the kiln, so it's, it's still a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's almost a week's work. Yeah, it is at least yeah. a week's work. So, as I mentioned before, that also I mean, this is a good illustration for you guys that think uh, wood fire uh, ceramics is, is too expensive, but it's actually not. <laughs> <laughs> it is expensive, but mostly we do it for fun, and then we make the money somewhere else. But it's um, it's a very important part of, of my work because it, uh, I use these uh, shapes and these places and these firings to develop um, ideas and uh, prototypes for a larger uh, work uh, that I do in Vietnam. So this this is like my research and my prototypes uh, and my um, like looking around for new shapes and new, new textures and uh, uh, so that way it's not the single piece but it's the the volume of the work and uh, what comes out. Maybe there are some details that I can use 
will, will take me further on and then we'll do another uh, aesthetics and uh, uh, you never know what comes out but there will most definitely be something that I can like continue working with uh, in a larger scale uh, when I work in Vietnam. Okay, we have work to do, so uh, we will continue the glazing and then um, continue in the morning. Thank you. <laughs> Besides glazing, one of the tasks um, in preparation of a wood firing is adding these little rotting In this case, it could be made in many ways, but in this case it's made by a combination of fall um, clay and sand and water. And then we mix up these little balls. And then they have to be attached to the bottom of each piece. Because otherwise, because of the heat and the flames and the ashes and all that, otherwise it will stick to the clean shape. So this has to be done for every single part, and there's a lot of parts. So that's what I do now. Um, so I take these, we all already roll them out, and I dip them in a little bit of the glue, right? Yes. Glue, the roll that they use for the carpentry and stuff. And then we put it on like this. And then we put a piece on, on a piece like this. On the bigger pieces, uh, we put five. Uh, this, like this. And of course, it should only cover the bottom, so you don't want it to touch the outside. I actually made the mistake of doing that, but the um, question was kind of uh, correctly. So now I made it like this. And then we put it on a piece of newspaper to. Um, so it doesn't glue to the food. So, I only have a few hundred more to do. It's day two. We uh, more or less just woke up. We had some um, breakfast. It's rainy outside today, unfortunately. Uh, we're doing the last part of the glazing uh, and doing all the weddings. Um, and then we will hopefully just right after lunch we will start packing up the kiln which is also quite a lot of work so we will finish all that today and then in the morning we will initiate the fire which will take place from Wednesday morning to Thursday afternoon so it is almost a whole week of uh, work to get this done but um, Hopefully it will be a nice day. I will follow up with um, clips from what we do. Wattings. Wadding. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fine at all. No, no, no. <laughs> no I'm well, it's not fine. It's very good. It, I was, it was just that we were now talking about how to arrange the kiln shops. Yeah. So, and therefore, if you had the wadding ready, mm -hmm. then we maybe we should make the wadding for the kiln shops. We can do that before we start. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. That be good. That's what we. Yeah. And and we have to make sure that we don't touch the pieces with the alumina. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now we moved outside to um, the kiln area where all the kilns are. Uh, we moved all the pots out here. And we're just finishing cleaning the buttons and adding the wattings, the little pieces of mixture that I told you about yesterday. We're adding to protect it from the kiln shelves. And now we're planning, um, I'm not so much, but Christian and the, the kiln expert at the location here, his, um, uh, planning how to stack the kiln, which is a, a special trade in itself and very important for, for the firing. There's going to be ashes of part of the kiln, there's going to be a little more heat in part of the kiln and that's the science in itself. Um, but these two experts, so I'm just following along and <laughs> trying to learn as much as I can. Thank <laughs> you. 
Is there a reason that um, it's not done usually? No. Yes, the reason is that you so normally, like normally you, you have the lowest um, piles in the bottom because yeah. it makes them more stable. Yeah. And um, when you come up here, you, you I don't know, you want to use the space, but, but that's just how you do it. You start with the small ones and then you go higher. Mm. Yeah. And uh, like if, if you have some big here, you, don't, you only have to put shelf to here. Yeah. So the risk of uh, tilting and going down is yeah. much less than if you have plates up here. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you normally don't do it. But yeah. But it could be like a real clever way to do. Yeah. To have because the, the pieces as well, the, they're quite tall anyway. So the, the biggest pieces in the bottom, and we'll just and we can use because we can we can leave like it gives us more space also. So we can be, give make real heavy. Uh, support. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Okay. That's really smart. Sounds good. So you will force your admin war in the order school. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 the men's guard. He he was the leader of the party. So now we worked all day. Mostly Christian did. Uh, me and Isabel helped with the wadding and stuff and cleaning up the pots. But Christian been doing the big puzzle of filling up the kiln, which is really a puzzle. But now we only need one more shelf and the last pots, and then we are ready for dinner. And then tomorrow, early morning, we will start the fire. <laughs> <laughs> we're packing uh, the wood fire kiln, it's a soda kiln where we have the, 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 the fire wood coming from over here and the heat goes through the kiln and up through the ceiling and down the chimney and uh, so we have like packed the kiln little open packing so that the flames can come through, but still we try to get all our things into the kiln. Um, <laughs> Which, surprisingly are, enough, we almost succeeded. I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, but, ah, still some left. but Yes, still some left. Um, so the, everything is glazed, but only with a very thin coating of glaze, because the, the, the ash from the firewood and the um, soda will uh, do most of the glazing uh, when it comes to the end of the firing and then in a, uh, it takes a 30 around 30 hours to to get the temperature and to put the soda in it and uh, so it's a long process and uh, then it takes a couple of days to cool down and then um, we can see the results and they are always very um, uh, it's always very exciting to see what comes <laughs> out because, because surprising yes, yes we can glaze it but we but the glazes only is some kind of indication of how good it looks in the end. So when we pack the kiln, we, it's very uh, important that it's level and that everything is it's almost fine. Uh, like that. It's good. And um, so the things is uh, we, we put something really called wadding uh, in the bottom. Uh, and that's just a piece of clay that's easy to take off again. But if we put the things directly on the kiln shelf, they would uh, glue to the kiln shelves. So and, uh, well, it's exciting to see if it fits. Da, da, da. <gasps> This is good. This is good. Uh, so. I like that. So when they in the firing, the things will get smaller. So where after firing, there will be, and in the end of the firing, there will be much more air coming through here in the top because this is uh, something like 10, 15 percent shrinkage from here. So the they'll, it will come down to about that size. 
and uh, we can see if we can fit some more pieces in it. But it's not because we have to have some cones sitting here so we can control the temperature. And this one is too big, so we can't see the cones. So we have to take it out again. And that's how it goes. <laughs> in and out and in and out. Uh, you try different things and in the end you get like a nice packing. Uh, and hopefully we uh, finish pretty soon. Okay, <laughs> thank you for that. That's dinner soon, so we, <laughs> we need to finish. Good morning. It is now the third day, early in the morning, and uh, the first day we glazed, and the second day we continued glazing, and then we packed the kiln, and uh, today it's ready, and we're gonna start it up at 10 o'clock, and the reason for that is that we wanna time the infusion of uh, soda into the kiln at a convenient time, and not like four o'clock in the morning. Uh, so question is, preparing the the ground it's been raining a little bit so we're trying to put some uh, wood chips in there to soak it up and uh, just checking the last few things adding the cones to the kiln and, and all that stuff so in about an hour we should be ready to initiate the fire Closing the door. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. If you want to put that brush on top of here. I found my old kill log from 1980. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> no, no, 20, 2080. 18. <laughs> He's very old. <laughs> no, but it's, um, or, yeah. Uh, but it, so it was my old kill log, and uh, okay. you could see the.
Time to bring out the marshmallows. Yeah. Bring them, yeah. Priscilla told a nice story about how to, like you could actually start it with the, just a few bags of uh, charcoal, normal for your um, uh, barbecue charcoal, and then just leave it for the night with the, and then you would like preheat the kill. So that could be a good idea to try next time. But this, this, the. Christian and we are at Bule Airport and uh, we are today we are and tomorrow we are making uh, firing in uh, this uh, nice kiln it's a wood fire soda kiln and we um, we just started the fire nice and slowly with uh, uh, some small pieces of firewood and uh, during the next 30 hours we will uh, raise the temperature until what we call cone 12 13 which is about uh, like almost 1300 degrees uh, and inside the kiln is packed with uh, uh, my hand thrown porcelain pieces you can see some of the leftovers is over here which was uh, too much to fill into the kiln but it's the kiln is packed and um, now we're starting the firing and uh, slowly slowly we will raise the temperature and um, so we will have this like few live video session during the next 30 hours and you will be able to like follow the, the firing and um, so if you want to see how we do this we will make the firing today and tomorrow and then in two or three on next Monday we will open the kiln and you might be able to see the results if we're proud of it if we're not proud of it you won't see anything <laughs> so I uh, hope to see you on this little uh, firing session. Thank you so much for watching. too much you block the air and then you have to work with the embers all the time. Mm. We're only a few hours into the fire, uh, everything is going well, uh, it's a couple hundred degrees, we take it very slowly um, because there's some bigger um, porcelain pieces in there so we don't want to fire too quickly. Uh, so the fire is going to go on all the evening, all night and tomorrow morning, hopefully somewhere around 3 or 4 o'clock tomorrow, Thursday afternoon, the fire is done and we close up the kiln and then it will need a few days to cool down before we open it. Unfortunately uh, I have to move on for some meetings uh, today so the rest of the team uh, Christian, Isabel and Oswald is gonna take care of the kiln all night. Um, I will have Isabel make a few more pictures uh, tonight when the fire gets a little more crazy and uh, I will put it all together for you. So um, see you again for the opening.
Hi. So I'm Christian, and we're uh, at the wood fire kiln in uh, Skarsgård, uh, the ceramic center. And uh, now we are around 850 degrees. It says on the pyrometer, uh, which means that the the kiln is uh, like glowing red inside. We have we're still in the in the early stage of the firing and. So when temperature goes up to around 1300, uh, 1200, 1300, the kiln will be much more aggressive than it is right now. So now we just nice and slowly uh, pushing more firewood into the kiln. And um, trying to raise the temperature. When we have a uh, kiln like this, the, and we fire with firewood, the temperature in the kiln is not even, but we have like different bricks we can take out and let more air in, uh, change the, the airflow in the chimney, and so we can do so many things to move the, the heat from the top to the bottom, from the back to the front. So we're trying now to like get an even temperature and a nice raise of about 80 degrees centigrade an hour. But it's nice and slowly and we're going to work through the night and maybe tomorrow morning. We are uh, 300 degrees higher than we are now. And then we can do some, there we have to push uh, soda uh, wafers into the kiln that will sit on the pots and they will uh, glaze from the soda we, we spray into the kiln. But right now we're just nice and easy raising the temperature and from now to eight o'clock in the morning, it's now uh, nine o'clock, eight o'clock night, evening. Uh, so we have 12 hours to go before we reach 1100, 300 degrees from now. So when we take these bricks out, we let uh, cold air go into the chimney and that will block the chimney so that we don't get so much draft. In the kiln we have uh, like a lot of things going on, but when we pull out two bricks here we will make it more turbulent so that it um, maybe the, the heat will change from the back to the front, but we never know.
I am now. like a heavy reduction uh, which means that we're filling the kiln up with the uh, firewood and closing all the doors and the chimneys and so uh, and that will develop the colors uh, on the clay and we have reached uh, like 1300 on the pyrometer and we have cone 11 it's called and cone 12 which is about 1300 uh, 20 something like that uh, degrees inside the kiln which should hopefully be enough but it will be different uh, in front and the back but that's so now we think or hope that we're finished uh, with the with the firing <laughs> uh, in three days time we will see uh, what comes out of it it is now Monday morning, uh, the fire went on until Thursday late afternoon. I was not here for the end of the fire, but I'm back again and we're going to open the kill in just a few minutes. Even now, after several days uh, without any fire, it is still 60 degrees centigrade inside, which is not so much. It's, it's good enough to take out all the pots, but it's surprising how long it actually stays warm. So it's good that we waited this long because it's easy to, um, to remove the pot from the kiln when it's cold enough to, to handle it with your bare hands. So in a few minutes, you will see, we will all see how it turned out. How are you feeling, Christian? Uh, excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's always very exciting to see what's inside. The... No, no. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's kind of obvious. It's very pale. So it's far too pale. Mm. Why is it so clean? Is it the carbon trapping? Yeah. Didn't trap too much. So. Oh. Mm. The temperature is nice. Well, maybe this one maybe crashed by the door. Oh! Well, you think it touched the door or something, or? <laughs> is that oh. a, a cooling crack? Mm. No. Uh, no. No, 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 it's, uh, it's, if it was cooling, it would be It would sharp. be sharper, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, do you think so it cracked on the way get, up? We didn't get any dark carbon, very, 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 very level. It is hmm. too bad. A little bit on these things. Yeah. This is one there, is there soda on the inside of them? There's well? soda you have to bring on your all kill of them. With you. Yeah. yeah. But, but they look good. Yeah. I do. I can't. Oh. It's it's uh, it's fast to pick Yellow chino. Oh, the gold, the golden chino. And, uh, oh, in these buckets, just either or. Like too much. No. Uh, so there. Mm. Um, Has it under fired? What cone is that that's bent? Ten. Ten is bending. Yeah. Mm. Mm. 
new, new, new. <laughs> but the, I think the point was that we felt that the heat and the top was, uh, and the front was so much. How many times have you been uh, firing this kiln? Uh, lost count. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot then. That's a lot. A very, yeah, yeah, quite a lot. <laughs> not going off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have a go. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can blame you. There we go. Okay. Better clean up on that. Oh my god. That's a good clean up right there. <laughs> what <There's> something <laughs> It just touches. But then it starts <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, but like it's, it's this is why I don't know if it's gonna be with him on camera, what? but he said. Yes. Yeah. I don't think this should be thin. Yeah. Yeah, it's I made so it too thin. Thin. It's beautiful. No, it's made it. <laughs> Last part of the project is uh, cleaning up the shelves because all these waddings and the soda have dripped down on the shelves and it's kind of a mess and we need some heavy tools and <laughs> grinders and stuff and then and unfortunately sometimes you break a shelf <laughs> it happens um, Conclusion of the firing is that the firing was uh, uh, too pale, and we had problems with the uh, temperature in the uh, in the front, and especially in the bottom, at the, in the lowest part of the front. So we will uh, change the firewall so that it will give some more open space there, and we will have a more open uh, kiln packing for for next firing, so that we more easily can get the temperature uh, and when we do that we can also get more reduction because problem is that if you struggle real hard to get the temperature you will hesitate by making too much reduction because reduction reduces temperature but reduction makes the color on uh, the, the porcelain so that if you if the if the kiln is not uh, firing really good and you can raise temperature you we tended not to use so much uh, firewood and then we reduce too little so next time we will try to make an open packing uh, and with more reduction in the end of the firing we uh, we close the the chimney and we close the kiln but in order to keep reduction in the firing chamber we decide next time to keep uh, pushing more firewood into the 
into the oven and uh, if it doesn't get any if it doesn't get any air the kiln will uh, will uh, the temperature in the kiln will lower uh, within a few hours so we just have to spend some extra hours in the end of the firing uh, keeping the reduction inside the, the firing chamber of the kiln but I would say despite those adjustments some pieces that came out yeah. really nice and um, we have some good pieces in the back so it's not just a disappointment no 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 it's always <laughs> like this that you have some something that you are excited about and something that you uh, want to do different next time that's what keeps us so busy and this is also a good example of why wood fired pottery does cost a bit more i mean beside well, all the work that we've done for a week uh, there is a f some sort of a failure rate to it or well let's say we had like a kiln like this will be maybe just just pure cost will be maybe around twenty thousand if you count in the 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 firewood the the, the firing the uh sleepovers the uh, porcelain the the bisque fire the glaze all together we are maybe around twenty thousand kroner and if only four or five pieces comes out nice they um, and you also <laughs> should pay for your time well <laughs> then you can uh, just calculate yourself that those four or five good pieces will be extremely expensive but so that's but why also extremely nice yes they are extremely <laughs> nice, but that's why board firing is uh, something you do to to improve yourself it, the, so the price of the pieces although they're really expensive, will never reflect the work you put into it.